What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at my favorite filming spot location because guess what? We finally have it for you and it's sitting right here next to me. This is it. This is a 2025 redesigned Nissan Kicks. This particular one is the top SR trim and it has all wheel drive the first time on a Nissan Kicks. But before we get into this subcompact crossover SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. So it goes all the way back to 2018. That was when the Kicks was introduced to the United States, replacing the Nissan Juke in the lineup here in the United States. In other parts of the world, the Nissan Juke continued on, actually continued on with a redesign that we never got. Now the Kicks, previous generation, it was kind of round in the front, like a little bit like a jelly bean, and it, it did its purpose. But wait until you see what Nissan has not only done to the exterior, but especially the interior on this Kicks, they brought it to a new level. So what I want to find out is, if you're looking for the best new subcompacts, remember this is a subcompact, compact is the Rogue. So it goes Nissan Kicks, when you're looking at crossover SUVs, Nissan Kicks, Rogue, Pathfinder, Armada. That's the, that's the lineup from small to big. What I want to find out is, do you go Kicks? over vehicles like the Honda HRV, the Mazda CX-30, the Hyundai Kona, the Kia uh, lineup of vehicles. Do you go that route or do you go with the kicks? Let's go ahead, let's dive into ours and find out. Right off the bat, I love this color. It reminds me a little bit of nitrous blue on a Ford Focus RS. The only difference is, is that the metal flake is more of a silver rather than a gold tinge, but you got a lot of metal flake within the paint job itself. All new face for 2025. I love the way they have these triple beam LED headlights up top. You have LED daytime running lamps and turn signals, and you'll notice the new design where the daytime running lamp flows down into the midsection. And then as we drop it down to ground level, I like the way they blended the color, body color, and the flat black. And one thing that they did, instead of making fake vents, you know how everybody's always say, Joe, you zonked the fake vent. What do you expect them to do? Here's a perfect example. They just added this like ridge area on the bottom here just to give it some texture. We don't need to have fake vents to give it an extra style, but I'm definitely loving the unique signature daytime running lamp. Now, as we come across the front grill, you got the top portion, the gloss black, sharply angled down. We do have a forward facing camera on this top SR trim. Speaking of SR, there's our SR badge. And then we have these vertical gloss black functional grill slots up top, a little bit of flat black, color match, and then down on the bottom. See how they did the texture on that lower lip? Nicely done all the way across and full functionality. Now, believe it or not, we do have a little bit more horsepower for 2025. And I just feel like it's really matured nicely. Not in a grown up boring way, but in a mature like, wow, it's got some real substance to it, especially on the outside. Let me know what you think about the new face of this Kicks. Now, as we rise up, super nice body line between the hood and the front grill. All you have is a nice kind of rise on each side of the peak of a fender. So it gives you some good visual reference points as you're driving. When we come around the bend, of course, if we have all new sheet metal, we're gonna have all new wheels. So what do we got going on our SR trim? Notice this new style wheel, machine aluminum. Love the way they put the ruffles ridges in it. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of this wheel? Believe it or not, you're looking at a 19 inch wheel. Tires are gonna be 225 on the width, 45 series sidewall. But who would have ever thought there'd be a day where Nissan Kicks has a 19 inch wheel and all wheel drive? Now there is flat black around the end, the uh, fender opening. I wish they would have body colored it, but at this price point, I'm gonna put up with it. If you look at the competition, like the Mazda CX-30, the CX-30, the cladding comes all the way up almost into the hood. HRV and uh, the Kia Seltos, and of course the Hyundai Kona aren't as bad. You could even throw in, the, of course, the Chevy Trailblazer uh, into that whole lineup as well. But uh, let me know what you think about the wheels. I, I feel like it's got a nice modern feel to it. Now, coming down the side, we do have gloss black on the mirror caps. You got 360-degree cameras on this thing. And then we have our two-tone. Nissan actually 
brought that two-tone style to the modern era. They did it with the Nissan Maxima a few years ago, having the black painted roof with the A pillars, and then the body color gives it that floating roof design. I like the way this has bright silver on the roof rails, and you do have a panoramic sunroof, which is nice as well, especially when we talk about at this price point. So panoramic sunroof, you'll notice how the trim kind of flares out to this butter knife. And look at this, I like the way it says kicks in the glass there. And what's cool is, is each color is gonna shine through. So if you have a white one, it'll say kicks in white. So it's the actual body color. Now, as we come around the rear, nice long roof spoiler, everything painted black, including the shark fin antenna. We do have the exposed wiper. I'm actually not gonna zonk it at this price point, but it would look a hell of a lot better if it was tucked underneath that rear spoiler. Love the way they did the LED tail lights, just like the headlights up front and the daytime running lamps. Gloss black across the middle. We got our kicks badge, and then of course the SR logo. And then coming down to ground level, once again, they did a great job. We don't need anything fake. You have your body color with the flat black. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to that point. Let's pop the hood and talk about extra horsepower for 2025. All right, guys, I got the hood pop. Before I let you in, I wanna just show you something kind of cute where they're putting the Easter eggs. You actually have the kicks name also on the post here for your side mirror. And I also like the way they brought some, that flat gray and then see how they texturize the bottom? It just looks good. It, it, it lets you know that they put a little extra thought into it. But what do we got going on underneath the hood? No engine cover. You just have a modern look to an engine today with all the hoses and tubes and everything else. What do we have? We have a two liter inline four putting out 141 horsepower. So we do have a little bit more horsepower, 140 pound feet of torque. It does have a CVT, but Nissan went through and changed some of the functions of it, make it function better, and it does have better simulated shifts. Zero to 60, you're not gonna win any races. 9.3 seconds, zero to 60. Top speed is 110 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs 3,300 pounds with all-wheel drive. MPGs, 27 in the city, 34 on the highway. And like I said, what's great is whether you're going S trim, SV, or SR, those are your three trims, you can get either of those with the all-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire it up and see this blueberry roll. Hi guys, we are inside this 2025 Nissan Kicks SR. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, top trim. I'm very curious what it's gonna be. How much is it? MSRP for this one is right around $31,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the competition and what Nissan is bringing to the door panels. Love the materials. Look at the soft touch everywhere. The two-tone stitching. We've been in cars that are twice as much as this that don't have materials like that. Even flowing into the armrest, nice soft touch. You have that trim around the switch gear. It looks like a simulated wood, but in a very nice modern way. I'm really digging it. It's better than gloss black. Door pocket is a little tight, so maybe just one beef and cheddar and a bottle of root beer to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. Look at the soft touch material. I like the way they put just a little bit of gloss black to give you this sort of shape like that V style grill that they do. And I love the soft touch here. Look at this, all soft touch. Flowing on in, you got two, not just one, but two 12.3 inch screens, full touch screen capable. You know all of the different apps, all the different things that you can do with this wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Throw it into reverse. Pretty darn good resolution on the cameras. You got trajectory and 360. And then, of course, you could also bring up your AC controls. Love how nice and uh, clear the graphics are. Now, if you do have a phobia to touching the screen, don't worry, I'm going to show you something. But what I like is when your hand's resting here, it's nice and soft. 
where you could go like this. It's very soft. Now working our way down, we do have our real volume knob. You got a camera button. You hit that, camera out the front with the trajectory as well. Then you hit it again. And look, there's that 19 inch wheel. Really nicely done. Look at that. And then working our way down, here's our AC controls. Now you do have two stages of heated seats. I do not really love the AC controls, the way you have to touch the gloss black because it's going to make a bunch of fingerprints, but it does look a lot better than the previous gen. You got your start stop button, wireless charging, two USB C's. This is going to control your CVT. Love the way they did the, uh, the anodized orange look with the stitching. D mode, I'll show you that when you come to the business end where you got your different drive modes. Two massive cup holders where you could put 32 fluid ounces of liquid and then you could pour that liquid into your body. There's the updated Nissan key fob. Like it a lot more than the previous one. More of that sort of simulated wood the way they did that. And what's nice is no fingerprints. Look at the way they did the stitching. Open this up. You have a 12 volt in there and you have enough room for, I would say, 10 packs of old school baseball cards. Or if we're using Steven as an example, which I don't really do that often, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So you got Charizard and all those other Pikachu, whatever the hell those cards are. Um, you could keep them in there and then you could sell them on eBay and be rich like Steven. The seats, love the simulated leather, love the Bose sound system built into the headrest. They went really far with the stitching. Now you do have manual adjustments for the passenger. You also have manual adjustments for the driver, but the the fact that the seats look so good and feel good when you're sitting in them, I'm okay with that. I don't like the tan headliner. That's got to go. This is too sporty to have a tan headliner. For some reason, when I see a tan headliner, I think rental car. That's just me. And then, of course, you do have your panoramic sunroof, power shade and all. I'm not opening up all the way because the sun is really bright today. 105 degrees ambient temperature. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I got a flat bottom steering wheel in this kicks I want to show you. Come on over. Hi guys, business time. Now one thing I want to show you is that believe it or not, this is ambient lighting. So you're going to have this nice white ambient lighting also in the interior. Down below you got your manual seat controls. Like I said, I'm okay with that because these seats are fantastic. They look good. They feel good. You're going to, you're going to want to sit in them. And then the steering wheel, the leather, the orange stitching, flat black on the switch gear. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then it's interesting how you could find the button right there to shut your auto start stop feature. This does have pro pilot assist, which is that semi autonomous uh, driving system and a heated steering wheel. And then, like I said, you got that massive 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. You could scroll through a cornucopia of information. And you have, of course, all those safety features to keep you flowing down the road nicely. But why don't we go ahead, front seat passengers are gonna feel good, the driver and the passenger. Let's see what the back seat passengers are gonna experience in this all new kicks. All right, back seat time, sitting back here. What's great is, is that uh, you got plenty of room. You got plenty of room, the seats are comfy. The stitching, I'm telling you, it's just the simple things that add up to the big picture. I got plenty of headroom because they carve out the, uh, the tan headliner, like a little bit like a, a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. You do have pockets. You could put, I would say, two large Publix cookies back here easily. And what's great is I remember when I was a kid, you go in there and you could get a cookie for free from the lady behind the counter if you were nice and you said please and thank you, which is something that a lot of kids don't know anymore. Please, when you want something, thank you when you get it. Now the back of the command center here, you do have two USB-Cs, nice touch. Like I said, the room is great. The only thing is I don't like the hard plastic, especially at $31,000 for the passengers, but you do have a nicely padded Charmin soft armrest with two cup holders, and I love the way they did the material. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the cargo area and see if big things can fit in small packages in this case. All right guys, time to get in that cargo area. Now the one sad thing is, that I have to zonk is that there's no electric assist for the top trim. But what's nice is, is you're gonna get more room over the previous kicks. So we have 24 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold the seats down, that's gonna give you 50 cubic feet of space. Now, believe it or not, they designed this so that you can go to Best Buy 
and get yourself a 65 inch television and lay it down flat while you're transporting it home. So those are the nice touches. Underneath here, tons of storage. I mean, look at that, no spare though. You just have a can of flat fix and a uh, electric air compressor, but you do have easily put, I would say, 42 boxes of Twinkies. Plus what's also nice is say, say you have a tall item to slide back here. Look how easy it is. Even with that cargo mat in my way, you get extra room from top to bottom. Plus you have nooks on the side. I like a little nook because they did it all for the nookie. So nice to have the nooks on both sides, but got to use the muscle to get it down. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go see how this all new Kicks drives. All right, guys, we're inside this 2025 Nissan Kicks SR. Like I was telling you with that selector switch, the D mode is the different drive modes, sport, standard, and eco. Real simple. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it into sport mode. That's gonna change how the steering sensitivity is and how the transmission and the engine behave with one another and the sensitivity for the throttle. But if you're ready, I'm definitely ready. Our throttle, here we go. So you do have those simulated shifts, which are much better than the previous generation to help keep that loud drone to a minimum. The screens, not my favorite when they're just like stuck there, but at least I can see the top of the dash. I don't like it when the screens are taller than the dash and stuck there. That just looks really like they kind of just put it there with some double-sided tape easy to get to that 12.3 inch infotainment system and these seats i'm telling you are superb nissan across their models they produce some amazing seats for comfort support and the fact that you have the bose sound system speakers right in the headrest um, is another nice touch that you only see on higher priced vehicles Overall, the driving dynamics have been improved. You got a more rigid chassis, so that cuts down on vibration and exterior noise. And like I said, the simulated shifts much better for this model year. But getting out onto the highway, it's one of those vehicles where, you know, it's the perfect city transportation but also when you get on the highway it's going to be comfortable enough to where you could go the distance and not have a really achy body the visibility out the front like i said you got those peaked fenders with the hood on each side visibility out the back is super clear and you do have like i said all the safety features the blind spot monitoring emergency brake assist all those goodies but going down the road, super comfy, super smooth. And they just, I mean, they improved it. They improved it to a new level to where it looks good, it feels good. And I think in return, people are gonna see the value in it. I actually think the looks, uh, compared to a lot of the competition, looks way better. Especially when you look at the Hyundai Kona um, even the HRV to me looks a little looks a little too puny in the front, but uh, this has a great look. I still think if if I was spending my money, I'm gonna go Mazda CX-30. But uh, for the price, this kicks really really is gonna change your mind about not only this particular model, but I think the brand as well, because they're really doing some amazing things at Nissan. Uh, like they promised they would. But the soft touch material, you got a great steering wheel. The stitching is very consistent in here. The seats, sporty, but not too gaudy. I just wish that the A pillar and the headliner was just a, a black color. I think that uh, I would actually prefer that. But let's go on throttle again, you ready? On throttle, here we go. Now you're not gonna win any races unless you are racing somebody on a uh, bicycle. But uh, what's great is, is that you have just enough oomph 
and you have the, the traction that you want, which is fantastic as well. But um, I think the bigger piece of the puzzle here is just how easy it is to use this infotainment system and how you still have your wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You ready? On throttle, here we go. But the driving dynamics are, are really, really good in this kicks, especially compared to last year. And I like the amount of room in here. It's like, you know, even though it's a subcompact, it's a little bit on the larger side, like the Volkswagen Taos. Um, and I'm really digging that in this vehicle. But I'm hoping that this has been a good overall review of what the Nissan Kicks is bringing. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a nanosecond. All right, guys. Another hot day, but another fun day with this 2025 Nissan Kicks. Definitely want to thank the whole Nissan team getting us access to this vehicle. Let me know what you think. Have they done the business? Does this outdo all of the competitors, especially the Honda HRV? Let me know down in the comment section. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Reds family. You need to give it up, Stephen Flood. No matter what the temperature is, right now we got a heat index of 104. Ooh, that breeze feels so good. Steven is still holding that camera steady like a champ. Thank you, Steven, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.